The Staffy and the Bull Terrier were two breeds born out of England's dog fighting pits. Even though the practice of dog fighting has been outlawed for some time in the UK, the charm, personality and humour of these two breeds have won hearts over not only in their homeland but across the world. If you're interested in bringing either of these playful and active breeds into your household, we'll take an in-depth look at all things Staffy and Bull Terrier to assist you making an informed choice about the right breed for you. Welcome back to the Fenrir Staffy Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Charlie and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly want to know about the Staffy. Then how to become high level canine leaders that can raise the perfect Staffy. So if you're a lifelong lover, thinking about getting one or just started your journey with your new Staffy, then this is the channel for you. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you never miss a future Staffy video. So let's dive into today's video. Let's start off with the appearance and size difference between the Staffy and the Bull Terrier. The Staffy closely resembles other bully breeds that might often be confused with breeds like the Pitbull. It is short in stature and has a well-muscled body, thick powerful jaws and while this may sound somewhat intimidating the package is finished off with a lovely pair of dark friendly eyes the staffy can stand up to 16 inches tall and weigh up to 38 pounds the bull terrier shares the same muscular structure though they are even more robust their head is a uniquely egg shape Another difference is that the Bull Terrier has erect ears and finally it's larger than the Staffy and can grow up to 22 inches tall and weigh up to 60 pounds. For exercise requirements, both of these breeds are active and playful. They need constructive outlets for their energy like long walks, hiking or even biking or else you run the risk of them becoming destructive having a lot of pent-up energy and can lead them to being rather unpleasant to deal with. Grooming requirements are also very close between the staff and the Bull Terrier. They both possess short coats and while they do shed quite a bit despite this, their coats are easy to care for. A bristle brush or rubber curry comb are the only tools you'll need to expel any dirt or loose hair from their coats. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video. I just wanted to quickly let you know, if you didn't know already, I have a completely free course on the principles of canine behaviour. As a canine behaviourist, I've put this together with my years of experience, skill set and knowledge to help you understand all the areas of canine behaviour that are important for you to become a high level canine leader and then you can can fix your dog's problem behaviors at home or maybe take the first steps into working with dogs with problem behaviors so again if you want to check out that course it's completely free of charge the principles of canine behavior there'll be a link down in the description box below and i can't wait to see you over on that course as we go forward with the rest of the video, it will be on the assumption that the dog has been given the proper socialisation and training from a young age. It will also be assumed that the dog is of the correct temperament and disposition for its breed. The Staffy and Bull Terrier also share how devoted they are and how strongly they bond with their people. They're very sociable breeds who like to be up close and personal with all of the action going on in their families. They're not destined for solitary existence. The Staffy is still used as a guard dog to this day, and even though they're a little smaller in stature, they make up for this in bravery and grit. While they usually are agreeable to making friends, they will not tolerate their family being in danger. You might very well see a different side of this breed. The Staffy tends to do well with children, and is also a reliable breed around children. They love their family in its entirety. Small animals can be tougher for the Staffy to handle, and this is different from individual to individual. Some are great with small animals, and some can live with them in peace. Others just can't disregard their instincts to catch and seize a small fleeing animal. Other dogs can be a sore spot, as dog aggression is a known fact breed trait. If there is going to be a success, the other dog in the household must be more of a submissive personality, as a staffy can get riled up and attempt to lay down the law when challenged by other canines. The Bull Terrier is also used as a guard dog, and like the staffy, they would risk it all for their family if they were in danger. However, this breed tends to be a bit more independent than stubborn. They need strong, consistent leadership or your Bull Terrier will likely end up walking all over you without a second thought. Bull Terriers can be good with children, but due to their size and energy, they tend to work better with older children. 
They also don't have a great report card when it comes to dealing with small animals. Their pro drive is high and they need a large amount of training committed to their dealing and socialization with small animals if this kind of dynamic is one that you want. Other dogs can be a problem. Dog aggression and opposite sex intolerance is a known issue. While some people do have success getting their bull terriers to live agreeably with other dogs, it's not a task for the faint of hearted or novice in skill. When younger, the staffy is easier to train than the bull terrier. They can be confident and have a mind of their own, but they are people pleasers. And before they really come into themselves, it's much easier to lay down the groundwork for success early. The bull terrier has more of a stubborn and independent side, and it can be hard to get them to engage with the training that you want them to do. The most fantastic way to gain their interest is to be creative and turn the training into a game for them. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's video if so make sure you hit that like button and get involved down on in the comment section below and don't forget if you are new here to make sure you subscribe we have two dedicated staffy videos coming here every single week so i can't wait to talk to you again on the next episode of the fenrir staffy show